meet for church. It's been almost two years, ladies and gentlemen. Time's up. Way, way, time's up. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. Good morning, good morning. My name's Richard, and we've got some more SBC fun coming up next. All right. How are you? How are you? Doing well? Good. Me too. Um, yeah. Briefly about me, I know I got a lot of new subscribers. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm a husband and a father, pastor here in Kentucky, an SBC pastor. I'm in the Southern Baptist Convention. I know there's a lot of problems, a lot of issues, and for the moment, we're staying in. We're staying in. We're going to fight. And no, oh, we're not woke. Don't worry. We're going to be looking briefly at J.D. Greer, the former president, three-year president because of 2020, and they skipped. Could have had a vote. They didn't, but whatever. Uh, now we have an even worse president in Ed Litton. Uh, with the plagiarism and the lying and, and the theft and all the rest. So things are not looking good for the SBC. They're just not. However, to echo Tom Askell, president of Founders, and other, he's a pastor, been a pastor for like 30 plus years down in Florida. He says, now's the time to fight. Mark Coppinger, I've talked to both of those gentlemen in uh, my show here, my talk show, Contra Talk, uh, where I sit down and have a little bit more dialogue, a little bit longer conversation about a particular subject. I've got a lot of those coming up. Just posted one with Berean Babes uh, channel, uh, <clears throat> Violet Chikuni, excuse me. And she's a immigrant from Africa. She's lived here a number of years now, married uh, out in Maryland. She lives in Maryland. She's got a great channel there. Uh, a lot more succinct and concise than me. That being said, that was a good conversation and I post those on Saturday. So this show is going to be on Wednesdays and Friday. Maybe I'll do another bonus one, but Definitely Wednesday and Friday mornings for Contra Thoughts here, and Contra Talk is going to be Saturday morning. Hopefully going to try and do a live uh, here and there on one or two times a week as well, uh, as far as just kind of like an ask me anything, talk about a particular subject, talk about a particular Bible study, that type of thing. <clears throat> Still trying to figure out and get a good schedule going for myself and you all, uh, because again, you're watching. If no one watches this, I'm not talking to anyone but literally my own camera right now. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been uh, a wonderful time. Really started producing content over the summer, and uh, it's been great building people, both other creators, content creators, as well as just fellow Christians. I've met a few non-Christians. This channel isn't just for Christians. It's directed at Christians, similar to how church is, you know, Christians. It's not for the unbeliever. Not to say this isn't for the unbeliever, but... I'm primarily going to be talking to Christians and then challenging both the world and also instructing and helping Christians to see the nonsense in the world, to drag the feet of the culture and the church, Big Eva and so on, to the fires of the gospel and expose that. So we're going to be briefly looking at a J.D. Greer clip from Doctrinal Watchdog. And I'm going to first just say off the top of my head, I agree with almost everything he said. Let that sink in. And here we go. I think the hardest thing to reckon with as a pastor is the persecution that comes from inside your church. I don't agree with that. From those that you know ought to stand no persecution. with you who do not. Not real persecution. I know many of you are preparing for ministry, but some of you already know what I'm talking about. That deacon, that staff member that you have invested so much time with that turns on you. The Absalom to your... Dad, that happens. The Demas to your Timothy. The John Mark to your Paul. That person whose belief structure you share so much in common with. Who turns on you because you won't acknowledge or bow down to their idol. 2020 was a difficult year for, for many, many reasons. But maybe... For me as pastor and as SBC president, the most difficult was that 2020 revealed that for a lot of people in our churches, their primary identity was political. Yep. It wasn't that it wasn't also Christian. They were also Christian, but the primary identity was political. We know that because a lot of church people left their churches, not just some at church, but a lot of them because of some disagreement over a relatively small political disagreement at least small sitting down your church for a whole year is not small yep eternity. well you didn't say enough. 
Shutting down their church. They did shut down their church for the whole rest of the year, rest of 2020, when most churches went back in May and June, or even earlier than that in 2020. Some churches are still not back, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not in a church, if you're in a church that's not meeting, unless like, you know, you're going to get shot on site by the, pr- the police or something, then you should leave your country because uh, that's not happening in America. Meet for church. It's been almost two years, ladies and gentlemen. Time's up. Way, way time's up. But they shut down through the end of the year, okay? And this is the same thing with not only talking about BLM, George Floyd, and he's going to mention this here in a second. And I agree with all these things, but I agree with him in the reverse way, in the sense that he's talking about conservatives, probably. That's my hunch. Because when I was at the SBC meeting in um, 2021 in Nashville, when Greer was presiding, it was very, there was a lot of, uh, they have the microphones and people can come up and talk. Uh, there was a lot of shutdown. There was a lot of ridicule. There was a lot of mocking uh, in a very subtle way. It was very, very subtle, but it still happened. There was a lot of people that wanted to talk that didn't get to talk, uh, that wanted to bring up things uh, about the previous two years ago because there wasn't a com- convention in 2020, right? So 2019 was Resolution 9, the critical theory, all this other stuff, and trying to renounce it, trying to do this, trying to renounce abortion and completely not this continued progressive revelation of it or this progressive um, changing, but rather a complete abolition. There's just a lot of that, and they they shut it a lot of it down. And Ed Litton barely squeaked out <clears throat> as the president who is not a conservative at all, not by any stretch of the imagination, not by the last multiple presidents prior to Greer, uh, and, and, and so on. So anyway, not to make this about the convention, but Greer, I agree with, and to, to a sense, it's hard. I get it. And it's a big church and he's way more cool hipster than the average, you know, John MacArthur or somebody like that, Alistair Begg pastor, right? He's way more cool guy preacher. I get it. And then you have to live up to that, but he made his own bed. All right. Or you messed up your bed. However, the phrase goes, you know what I mean? So I'm leaving. But you said too much. So I'm leaving. And I would say to these people, some of whom have been at our church for years. Called BLM a gospel a issue. And I would say we agree on every point of gospel doctrine. We believe in the gospel. We believe in the authority and inerrancy of the Bible. We believe in the sanctity of life and marriage. I married your children. I walked with you through the tragedy of a death of a loved one. And now you are leaving because you disagree because we said too much, one too many things about George Floyd. Or we said not enough about him. Or because we asked you to wear a mask for a season. Or because we did not keep the mask mandate in place long enough. We Christians say that we hate cancel culture, but it was amazing to me how so many of us canceled our church. Yeah, so <clears throat> Grace Grace Community Church out in California stayed open the whole time. John MacArthur, right? That caused a lot of big waves there in 2020 and even into 2021. And the city hates it because ultimately what's going on is the government wants control. Right. The authorities, the the people in charge want control of you and they want control of me and they want control of not only what we eat, what we drink, where we go, what is on our phones and how we worship, where we work and everything else. But since especially church, which is the gathered body of believers, Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, you know, whenever you meet should be more than Latin than not, uh, but it should be at least at least at least once a week. Each week I'm starving to get there. Now I preach regularly, so it's slightly different for me. But even when we were in the middle of 2020, at the beginning of May, I was like, are we going to go back to church or what? Because Zoom church ain't working. And that was only, you know, six, seven weeks of of doing it online, quote unquote. Greer's church went through the end of the year. I would have easily left if I knew that. And a lot of other churches in these other cities and places are meeting, you know, in May and June of 2020. Okay, we're not doing a convention, okay? And then, oh, now you go and support BLM, or like David Platt for sure did, and others with his pastoral staff keep to, kept his church closed as well. They're in D.C., Metro D.C., and yet went and marched in rallies. This is exactly what the leftist Democrats do. Exactly. Right? Bowing, wearing the this, doing the that. They did the whole cultural appropriation with the garb. This was, I don't know, a year or so ago. In solidarity. 
you see this clip? These people bowing in Houston, lighter skin, melanin, melanated people with more melanin, bowing to the more melanated people. Did you see this? And this was like a church. I'm, I almost vomited when I saw it back in, in June of 2020. It's disgusting. There is brokenness and sin in the world, but kowtowing to it and not adhering to scripture and not being somebody who actually has conviction and is not captured by empty deceit and philosophy as Colossians 2 tells us. Or having not having our minds renewed like Romans tells us. Have your mind renewed. You have to renew it because it gets crusty, it gets it gets barnacles and and just garbage just slowly i mean just leave something metal outside for a day or two uh, you got rust already right termites moths you name it you have to be working towards this and sadly jd greer led the southern baptist convention so poorly i used to like him more i didn't really ever like 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 him in the sense of adhering to a lot of what he uh, said or did or anything else, but I appreciated his candor and kind of how he nuanced certain things. But man, it just, it's, and I agree now that these people left, but they left because by and large churches turned more liberal. They more, they turned more leftist. It was very little Christian conservatives <clears throat> on the right side who are staying and leftist people are leaving. Now, I do know a few people in our church before I took the pastorate in 2020 that had left uh, our church in Louisville, a few of those people, because they didn't, our church in Louisville, didn't do enough with the racial justice, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that does happen. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. But by and large, I don't know the percentage because I'm not omniscient, but there are churches, right, all over the place, all over our North American land, that progressively do, because churches generally go leftist, they go liberal. This is not new. It's been happening since the beginning. <laughs> it takes a lot of effort to cut stuff off and start fresh to make things orthodox again, right? Or you start a new denomination, which sadly happens a lot of times. You don't just slowly drift right. You always drift left. Why? Because of your flesh, because the world, the flesh, and the devil. So we drift left. And because we drift left, People who are in churches and are saying, oh, yeah, I mean, we do agree, like J.D. Greer just said. We agree about these doctrinal points, and that's what makes it all the worse, actually. Not better, right? Because you have like a big vat of sweet tea, right? Five-gallon jug, jug, drum of sweet tea, and it's sweet. It's not too sweet, but it's not, it's, it's not overly sweet, right? It's just the right amount of sweetness or under over, right? And you're about to do your church fellowship meal. And then you see, you know, your church treasurer come in and she just drops a couple ounces of arsenic in it or gasoline or strychnine or bleach. Are you going to drink it? Oh, wait, drop me a comment. Tell me if you're going to drink it. <laughs> no, of course, you're, of course, you're not going to drink it. You're going to be like, what, what, what are you doing? And then she might retort. It's only like an ounce of poison. This is five gallons. And you're going to say, you just ruined it. Yeah, but this is like 99% sweet tea, pastor. What's your big, why are you being so dogmatic? Why are you being such a legalist? She might say. <coughs> this doesn't, this has not happened, by the way. It's just an illustration. Nobody was harmed in the making of this illustration. The point is, you wouldn't do it. Spurgeon, at least it's attributed to him, has a great comment about having right and wrong, and I'll butcher it because I, I don't have it off the top of my head, or it just came to me, of knowing it, knowing something. It's not about knowing right and knowing wrong. It's knowing right and knowing what's almost right, right? This, this, and that's how most people are. Most people are quote unquote good people. Most people do what is right. They hold the door. They do the thing. They, they love their children. They work hard. They do the dishes, whatever. But if they don't have Christ washing away their sin, even if their sins are small, you know, they're small compared to the world. You know, I'm not a murderer. I'm not an adulterer. I don't steal. I don't cheat. I don't lie. Yes, but you're still a sinner. You've still fallen short. You're still that strychnine, that arsenic dipped, dropped into the sweet tea. God's perfect holiness 
and you've ruined it and your rebellion. And so have I. And that's why we need Christ. And when you have churches like this that don't preach that, that preach too much leftist tropes from whatever, well, that's a problem. I mean, even J.D. Greer says, I don't know if it played or not, I only have you an hour a week to disciple you, but Rachel Maddow and Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity have you for three hours a night. Well, that sounds like a problem, doesn't it? Why don't you have community groups? Why don't you? I mean, maybe they do. But why, why aren't you doing more? <laughs> Not less. Yes, I understand we shouldn't watch cable news. I don't think we should. I don't pay any attention to cable news or anything else. So please, if you're watching this, uh, I don't. So don't accuse me of that because I'm not. I just have a brain that works and I pay attention. And most of this is just corruption to the core. It's just thick with nonsense. And most of these churches, Greer's Church, Platt's Church, Chandler's Church, Keller's Church, a lot of these big Eva pastors... They used to be good, but were they ever really good? Or were we just overlooking things? That's the question. That's the real question. And I believe 2020 and 2021 still, uh, now it's 2022, revealed. It was an apocalypse, right? And that's what, really what that means. It's just revelation. It's a revelation, a bringing and a, just a sheet being pulled back and saying, oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't notice that before. Because if you go back now with those eyes and you put on the glasses and you see more clearly, you're going to see the corruption, the rust, the cracks in the foundation a year ago, two years ago, five, ten years ago in these men I just mentioned and their work. I remember even in 2015, Russell Moore, and he's left the SBC and he's just doing his own thing, whatever. He talked about um, and he mocked somebody. He told a story about a guy who asked a question, and the guy was asking about a mosque being built. And Moore was like, duh, of course we're going to help build the mosque. We're going to support that effort. And it's like, are the Muslims going to help support churches? And I, even then I kind of thought, what? What? I, wait, did I misunderstand what you just said? No. And that was in 2015. This was six, seven years ago. Okay. He's been doing this a while, but Muslims aren't going to support it because ultimately he doesn't support the Great Commission. He doesn't support the gospel. He doesn't support conviction. Now, again, I agree with him, but I agree with him for different reasons than what he's, his point is. Mainly, conservative people who love the Bible, who love Jesus more than the political structure, left. Because you're talking once again about these <clears throat> CNN talking points. Quit it. Stop it. Yes, George Floyd's death was crappy. It was bad. But how many other people are killed on a regular basis? I need to do a show. It was a little girl who was killed uh, day after Christmas. Eight-year-old little girl. Looks like she'd be re related to George Floyd down in New Orleans. Killed by gun violence from other gang members. Is there a single word? Do you even know her name? Do I even know her name off the top of my head? No. Not a single person's talking about it. Not a single one. That is hypocrisy. That is a lie. It is, it is a shame. It's sinful. It's wrong. All they're doing is cherry picking and using certain things. Are there marches? Are there protests? Are people lighting up buildings, burning down structures, bricks through windows, beating police officers, strategically trying to harm certain types of people? No. Why? Because it's not politically motivating. It's not politically expedient. So you have pastors who are to shepherd the flock of Christ. And all they do is kowtow and bow down to MSNBC and CNN. Sometimes Fox. There are others. Robert Jeffers does way too much for the quote-unquote right. And he's off the deep end in my estimation too. So don't get me wrong. I think he's wrong in a lot of ways too. But I'm talking about J.D. Greer because he was on this thing. Leave your church if you're not meeting. Go find a church that's meeting. Go. Even if it's in a house and you're seeing people face to face. More and more, the revelation, the apocalypse is being revealed that we've been lied to for nearly two years. Routinely, systematically lied to. Over and over and over again. By our medical establishment, the people who we're supposed to trust, our churches, our denominations even, 
our seminary presidents, our book publishers, those who publish the articles. We're in a battle, ladies and gentlemen, and it's raging. And I do this channel to help you to see that nonsense, to call out that nonsense, to maybe help you at least pick up something and look on the other side and say, oh, that's a good point, Richard. I've never, never thought about that before. To help you be more discerning, to call out the evil, call out the nonsense. And then say, don't be captivated by that philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Have your mind renewed. That's the big difference. Be no longer a child, like Ephesians 4 says, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Don't be a child. Be against the world for the sake of the world. Contramundum pro mundo. Again, as I said earlier, these episodes are Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, contra thoughts, that's what this is. And then Contra talk is on Saturdays, uh, Saturday mornings. Everything's in the morning. That way I just, you have it and you can put it in your feed. Do me the three-piece special if you would. Drop a comment. Subscribe and like this video. Thanks so much.